doing everything as far as prosperity within life and moving forward towards your dreams and goals and not letting someone deter you and tell you that you cannot do what you want to do as far as living in your life and fighting for your dreams no matter what the case may be anyway that being said I want to talk to you about something in reference to trans military now I don't know if you knew about this but I just thought it was very interesting in case you want to be the kind of person who want to do you know a broad type of thing and there are transgender people that are actually serving within the military Which I don't know if you know about this, but I just thought I'd bring it to your attention. Actually, um, there's like there's like 15,500, um, so far as counted, as trans in the U.S. military. Now, the two people I'm going to stay focused on this time is reference to Logan and Layla. Here's the picture right here. Okay. Now, this is a trans man and a trans woman. Now, the thing is with them two is that they're actually in a relationship together and they're serving within the service. Now, the trans man, um, okay, this is the thing. Trans, trans, transgenders are twice as likely to serve as the fellow citizens, but current, but current policies prohibit open service. You know, so basically, um, they're saying that, you know, they're trans people that's inside the military and stuff are serving, but a lot of times they kind of feel as though they should say, say low-key instead of letting people know, you know, their gender as far as what they are. You know, I don't know how that works out. So it's just upon, you know, that they do um, checks and stuff like that. But Logan told, Logan is a trans man, okay? Logan told, um, Logan told, um, you know, the man in charge, the command in charge, that he was born biological female, but transitioned into a man. Now, Logan always felt as though he was a man, and he felt as though everything on the inside should match the outside. So, Logan had started, you know, um, female to male transition, basically, you know, taking um, shots and stuff, be, you know, to achieve the correctness as far as living in his truth. Now the thing about it is that he's been fighting in Afghanistan and stuff like that and you know he's been around the men and stuff you know and basically what we learn is that over there in the service as far as Afghanistan, as, forgive me, Afghanistan, it's going to be a time Christian, but we'll say in the service, um, they're much more receptive as far as, you know, they really don't care, you know, because basically, I guess, because you're fighting a war, and at this point, you're my friend. It's not all about um, what, what, how were you born or what race. It's about, I am my brother's keeper. Now, the first sergeant, um, so um, Logan went to one of the sergeants and told the sergeant that, you know, he was um, transitioned, you know, that he was a trans man, and he, you know, a lot of times people don't understand what that means, and I'm just going to get a rough draft on it as far as what a trans man means. A trans man means that you were born biological female, but you transitioned over to male. Now, as far as being a transgender woman, you was born male, and you transitioned over to female. Now, I don't know if you know about that, but I just put that out just in case you don't know. Well, Logan went over to, um, you know, told his sergeant, you know, lieutenant, that um, he had transition and stuff like that. Now, when you express this type of um, comfortableness and you feel as though you can kind of share it with them and let them know, you know, your gender and hopefully you get accepted when you know, you explain your story. You know, the people say, okay, I understand, you know, we'll just deal with this just right. 
Well, Logan went and told um, the commander, and the commander went and told um, the unit. Went and told, um, okay. Logan told the sergeant, and the sergeant went and shaped chief, and went called to, uh, was called to, Logan was called to the um, office unexpectedly, and they had a meeting to meet with Logan. Now, the thing about it was that Logan, you know, he's with his girlfriend and stuff like that to go to a meeting. So basically, once they got off of camp, you know, and stuff, I guess for visiting hours or, you know, like visiting each other on the weekends and stuff like that. So he was called into the office, I guess, to discuss it. So basically, the person he could find into went back and told, you know, that we have someone on here who's transgender. And, and he was basically called to the office. So he had this called to the office with the, um, the meeting with the unit. So basically, he sat down and everything, started talking and stuff like that, and he said, I understand, you know, I heard a little bit of information in reference to you, Logan, you know, as far as, you know, what you are and stuff like that, and, um, set him down and everything, you know, because at this point, you could be deported as far as being deported or, you know, AWOL kicked out and stuff as far as being in the service because of who you are. So basically, Logan was treated with welcoming arms. So congratulations, Logan. And... Basically, what they did was, um, this is the thing. He asked Logan if he had a, um, had his blue on. Now, blue is like, a, I guess, a tag and stuff to let you know, you know, it, it defines, it defines gender as far as, you know, female or male and stuff like that. So, Logan had, um, one that represented gender as far as female and the, um, the sergeant gave, or the commander gave him the blue one as far as, the, well, the one that belongs to men as far as, you know. And, um, this way, you know, when they have this ceremony and stuff like that, they can wear their hats and stuff like that, so. And, um, he had the wrong blue and he gave it to him, so. But one thing I did find that it was a little bit sad, but realistic in the world we live in, and hopefully it's rules will be changed and stuff like that, but trans women don't receive the same type of accolades as far as what the trans men get. trans women they make them use um they make them they make the main they make them as far as what I'm reading um use the men's restroom and they make them go according to the standards and stuff like that and you know they call them by their male names and um they haven't quite changed as far as that you know and it's just one of a change, you know, I guess within anything, it takes time and stuff. So, you know, I just thought it was very interesting that, you know, there's a lot of trans people that serve in the U.S. military. But the, did you know that? You know, and I just wanted to share that and stuff, you know, but as far as the trans woman, they said that it's still, it's still steps and stuff. It's still a lot of steps you have to go through, you know, as far as being trans woman inside of the military. But as far as men, I'm sure there's some trans men that go through the same you know, problems as well as far as being misgendered and stuff. You know, but regardless of what it is, um, we thank you, we salute you for, you know, for fighting in the army and stuff. And thank you, you know, because you're putting your life at risk so we can live in a land of freedom. And I thought it was really important, you know, due to the fact that we've having so much Orlando and stuff like that, we need to go back to the people who's actually fighting for us and try to make it a better way so we can keep our freedom. You know, we overlook the underdogs sometimes. We get, we get so lost. And so much of the demise of the hate that we see out here in the world, we have to understand we actually have military people who are actually fighting for our freedom and stuff like that. So, you know, thank you all of you military people, you know, trans or whatever the case may be, you know, you're putting your fight, you're putting your life at risk for us so we can be free and stuff. So, thank you. And also thank you, Logan and um, Layla for... You know, for sitting up there and spending your truth and, you know, finding to let people know of the awareness and stuff. And also, I'm going to put a little link down there in case you want to give a donation and stuff. You know, as far as the trans military and stuff. So, you know, they take offers and stuff and they're fighting for it and stuff. So, I'm going to leave a link. Um, this is like the link right here. But I'm going to put the link down inside the box, you know, in case you want to click on it and get some type of donation to help trans in the military, you know. Anything helps, you know, it doesn't matter how much you give as long as you try to do your best as far as you can. And if you can't um, give, hey, all you can just do is write down in the comments, thank you. You know, they can say thank you. You can't, do, you can't do nothing wrong with saying thank you for your, um, for your help, you know, your support as far as them fighting for your freedom, you know, anyway. 
So I want to tell you, have a safe weekend, and I just want to give that to you as much information and stuff. You know, I just thought it was very important that you know about this, and you know, because this has been a very, very sad month, and June has really been very, very eye-opening, but very depressing, and you know, and for some reason, uh, I don't know, but I just kind of wanted to leave it on a good note as far as Friday being let you know that we do have the military people out here as well as the U.S. military, the Navy, whatever the case may be, you know, they're fighting for our freedom and stuff and, you know, and thank you. All you can say is thank you, you know, so I just wanted to put it out there and stuff like this. So have a safe weekend. I want you to know I love you and I want to thank you for watching. Thank you for subscribing. I want you to do you. I want you to best visit. You can. And nobody likes it. Oh, sorry.